The movie begins in a pharmaceutical facility for genetic therapy called Gensis. The female ape, number nine, also known as Bright Eyes by the staff, has been treated with ALZ-112 and has made significant progress. She has mastered the Towers of Hanoi puzzle in 20 moves, which is nearly a perfect score of 15, and is friendlier and calmer than typical apes. Will Rodman speaks with his boss, Steve Jacobs, and persuades him that he has information that will allow them to move forward with the drug's human trials. The following day, Rodman and Jacobs show up in the Gensis conference room to address the board of directors. Will explains that the novel medication boosts neurogenesis and the development of new brain cells and has the potential to treat a wide range of degenerative brain diseases, including Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. The drug's only side effect is a green sparkle in the subject's eyes after exposure. Robert Franklin, the senior ape caretaker, is having a hard time getting bright eyes out of her cage back in the lab. She acts aggressively with Robert and the rest of the helpers. They use orange soda to try to entice her out of the cage, but she escapes when they lasso her and try to contain her. When she smashes through the conference room's glass window, the chase comes to an end as security guards kill her. Returning to the lab, Robert reveals to Will a young ape that was kept secret in Bright Eyes' cell. This clarifies that their presumption was incorrect. Bright Eyes' violent behavior was motivated by protecting her child, not by the drug. Robert assigns Will the task because he lacks the courage to put the baby down. He refuses to do so and decides to take the baby home with him. Will goes back to his house where he lives with his father Charles who has Alzheimer's disease and requires nursing care when Will is away. Charles is immediately fascinated with the baby ape after Will shows him. Charles jokingly refers to the infant as Caesar who soon shows amazing development. He stays with Will for three years as a temporary resident and Will creates a room for him in the attic. While Caesar is improving mentally, Charles' Alzheimer's disease is worsening, and he argues with his nurse. Will steals ALZ-112 from Gen Sis, taking a significant risk. He gives Charles a dose, and the next day, Will finds his father at the piano playing flawlessly, so it seems like it must be a miracle drug. Caesar, who has grown to love watching the neighbors play outside, escapes through the window and enters their neighbor's backyard in the meantime. The neighbor's daughter, however, is alarmed by his appearance, and Hunsaker, her father, violently assaults Caesar. Caesar is eventually saved by Will and Charles, but not before Hunsaker hurts him. Will steals Caesar to a zoo for treatment. There, Carolyn Arana, a veterinarian, looks after Caesar. They take Caesar across the Golden Gate Bridge to a redwood forest for some outdoor play to soothe his wanderlust. When they reach the forest, Caesar refuses to leave Will and instead extends his arm with his palm up in a supplication gesture as a way of requesting permission to play. Caesar climbs the trees after Will gives his approval. After five years, Caesar has grown and Carolyn now resides with the Rodman family. Charles' state has gotten worse in the five years since he was given ALZ-112. Will argues that since his immune system has produced antibodies, a more aggressive virus is required. Will takes a chance by visiting Jacobs, confessing his covert research with his father, and elaborating on how the drug not only treats cognitive damage, but also enhances intelligence. He claims to have revised the virus and requires Jacobs' approval for new animal testing. Back at home, Charles becomes disoriented and wanders outside into the neighbor's vehicle. He tries to drive it, but he damages it. Caesar notices this through the attic window and immediately leaves the house after hearing the neighbor yell and push Charles. He assaults Hunsaker by knocking him to the ground, jumping on him, beating him, and then biting off a finger. Charles shouts, Caesar, no, as soon as he recognizes Caesar. Caesar backs down and returns to Charles. Animal Control picks up Caesar after the incident and transports him to a primate sanctuary. Twelve gorillas are delivered by the sanctuary to Gen Sis for the testing of ALZ-113, the updated version of ALZ-112. The testing is once more overseen by Will, who selects Koba, a rather frazzled ape, as his first test subject. The new medication is administered to Koba while she is restrained. Later, when Dodge and his friends are inside the cage area of the sanctuary, Caesar takes a pocket knife from one of the guests. By letting him loose, Caesar makes friends with Buck, a large gorilla who lives in the yard but is never let out of his cage. After that, he lets Rocket out into the yard. Caesar hits him with a steel can. 
Rocket is prepared to fight, but when he sees that Buck is devoted to Caesar and will defend him, he gives in. Caesar then lets Rocket out of the cage area and allows him to give one stolen cookie to each ape, strengthening the bonds of the group. Will arrives back at the office to discover that Jacobs has rashly and avariciously advanced the research schedule. Will warns Jacobs that the main concern they should have is how the more recent ALZ-113 will affect humans, while Jacobs is primarily focused on business profits. After Jacobs ignores his warnings, Will quits and heads back to the ape sanctuary to convince John Landon to give him Caesar. Will tries to convince Caesar to go back with him, but he rejects. Caesar, that night, breaks through a window he discovered and returns home. He takes ALZ-113 out of Rodman's fridge and gives it to the gorillas at the sanctuary. John Landon witnesses the apes holding a meeting-like activity the following day. The apes disperse as they play it off. Landon brushes it off as being simply weird. The following evening, as the apes were being led back to their cages, Caesar refused, confronting Dodge in the yard and defeating him. While being held, Dodge screams, Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! For the first time, Caesar shouts no. As a witness, the other caregiver rushes into the cage area to save the now unconscious Dodge. The apes attack him, but Caesar separates them, and out of compassion, captures him in his cage. Dodge attempts to run away, but is killed. Will calls to check on Caesar early in the morning, but gets no response. He drives over to look and discovers the facilities destroyed. The gorillas have gone, and the ALZ-113 canisters open in the cage areas. The apes are moving across town in the meantime. Caesar separates the group into two. While Caesar guides this second group to Gensis, Buck travels with one group to the zoo to free the apes there. Jacobs, who has just arrived at work, is informed of the apes' escape. He discovers that the 12 ape test subjects from ALZ-113 have been released, and Caesar and the other apes have taken control of the building. They call the cops. Jacobs boards the police helicopter as Caesar and Buck's group join forces, totaling 50 to 60 chimps, orangutans, and gorillas. The apes, on the other hand, appear to be deliberately preventing the deaths of humans they encounter. Will and Carolyn have been informed of the rampage, and when they discover that the apes are heading for the Golden Gate Bridge, they assume that Caesar is leading them to the Redwood Forest. The officers are ready to fire on the gorillas from the bridge, but Caesar divides his forces once more. One group scales the suspension cables to get around the obstacle, while another swings from the building's base. With the justification that Caesar's death will dissuade the others, Jacobs instructs the men to fire at him from the helicopter. Busk, risking his own life, jumps onto the helicopter as it hovers close to the bridge and brings it down. In the meantime, Will steals a police car and drives into the woods. He shouts Caesar's name, but is interrupted by one of his followers. But as soon as Caesar shows up, the others start to disperse. Will tries to make amends with Caesar by promising to look out for him if he travels home with him. Caesar startles Will by cuddling up to him and muttering, Caesar is home. Subscribe for more videos like this and turn on the notifications so you never miss any of them.